Hi guys, I'm Cal, I'm the moderator for today, and um, Marcus is going to address some questions. Yes, so, ready to go. Ready to go. So the first uh, question is from Gene. The finer details of the NIS choke, oh, sorry. North, North South, South choke, <laughs> <laughs> or your favorite variation from that position? Okay. So, uh, last week I showed my favorite joke from this position here, right? I just said for people who didn't watch last class, I'm going to show here some details to control the guy well when you get to the north-south position, right? So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to work with my hands, one under his arm, one over the arm, right? And my body go to the same side that my hand is under his arm, right? I put this one, I go this way. If I go this one, I go this way, right? So this gives more stabilization for you to control the guy in the position. So I go right here, over, turn the side of the belt to control. This one I go under, turn the side of the belt also to control, and I'm right here, see? So, I hug him and take my knees out of the ground. I just touch my toes all the way to his shoulder on his face. If you try to move here, you can see he cannot go anywhere. Right? So this is just the part to, to control here. Uh, the choke that I showed last week, I'm going to bring this hand here back. I go to my knees bring my hand back and put my wrist under his neck. So I control right here. Not sure if you guys can see very well. Go to the other side. See? I put my hand under here, keep my palm down. My arm don't go all the way through. I just put my wrist behind the neck. Right? So I'm right here. Now I'm gonna move my body back. So I just, see, sprawl, and I'm going to put all my weight on his face. And he chokes on. Can I just get it from the other side, please? Yeah, come to the other side. Over another, control, with the weight on my toes. Now when I want to attack the neck, I'm going to put my knees on the ground. Put my hand under the neck. Palm down. Okay. Soon as I hold it here, I'm going to slide my body back until my arm pit touch his throat. And I do a little sink like this, right here. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to sprawl. When I walk around and drop my hip, the choke come. You guys can see, I don't even need to hold my hand to squeeze, right? So the choke is very powerful when I work right away. So this one we did last week. I'm going to show another variation of choke. So, same thing here, over another, I'm going to bring my arm under the head, same move here. The only difference here is going to be the finish, okay? So, I'm going to move back again to put his throat on my hand pit. And now, the other hand on the belt, I'm going to push his shoulder because I'm happy. Every time I move away from him, the guy going to try to follow me. So I have less pressure on the neck, right? So by this one here, I came back here. I'm going to block the shoulder with my hands. And my other hand, I hold my wrist. So now, if you try to move it back, he can do it. And when I lift my elbow the other side from the ground, the choke comes right away. So it's a very strong choke. 
and when you block the shoulder, you don't let the guy move back to relieve the pressure in the neck. So I can do one more time this one. Throw, move back, lift it up, block right here. Move my body back, block to the shoulder, hold my wrist, and when I lift my elbow from the ground, the choke is on. So this one, we have a big variation of chokes from the night south, but to have time to attend the other questions, we're gonna keep just those two today. Okay, so uh, Gene says thank you, Marcus. You're welcome. Right, next question is from uh, Troy Shear. Uh, your favorite knee on belly defense. Okay. So, I don't know if I did the stick knee already, right? But uh, this is something very important here, right? So every time you are on the bar, someone come put you on the belly, you have to stop the pressure because sometimes if you are tired, the guy put the pressure you're right here on the diaphragm. So gonna, you're gonna have a problem for breathing, right? So to avoid this problem here, look, I can't be flat on the ground. So if he come here to put it on the belly, I stretch my leg close to him and turn my body to the side. He can push me here down my work. My butt don't touch the ground. So he cannot apply the same pressure here, right? So I'm safe here. So now look what I'm gonna do. This end here, I'm gonna hold the belt. Four fingers inside the belt. Right? To control him. Because what to happen? Sometimes when you start to defend, push the guy here, some people go around and go to the other side. Walk around. And he put the other knee on the belly. Yes. Okay, so keep moving one side to the other side. Go back there. So I cannot get, give this freedom to the guy. The big problem of the this generation do Jiu Jitsu now is give the freedom to the guy when they fight. You cannot give the freedom to the guy. The guy came here, right? You have to be safe, don't let him attack. Turn to the side, control the belt. Now, if you try to walk around the other way, he can't. Right? So I have the control. And now this end here, I'm gonna sweep, swim under his ankle and bend it. Right here. You see? So he lost completely his balance here. So now I just throw him to the side and I come to the top. So one more time. He go me on the bed. I turn my body right to it. Control the belt. Right here. Okay? This end now I'm gonna swim under, bend him and hold the collar. Right? Bring him to the side, tight on the top, right away. I hope you guys understand is a good escape from this position. Marcus, uh, next question is from Brian. Escape from turtle when you don't have an arm. Okay. Come here. No, no, no. I'm in turtle position, right? Put your knee on the ground, left knee on the ground, base, yes. So the guy gonna control me here, right? But uh, some people put your left hand to hold my wrist here, like this, right? 
So what happened here in this situation? People bring their block, lock his arm, he cannot pull back anymore, and I'm gonna flip him the other way. So I stretch my leg back, close the other knee, and take over. You're gonna fall, you just come to the top. But sometimes, go back. When you go to this position here, he don't wanna hold my arm here. I can't reach his arm to dominate the arm and flip him, right? So, if you wanna hold me like that, whatever you wanna hold, look what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna move my body forward, right? So, usually, people don't do what he's doing because he has no weight on my back here, right? Switch with me here. When you go to the third position, dominate the opponent here, you put the weight of your body right here, right? So, you can control the arm pit, so you cannot control my arm, right? I can hold the pants here and work my elbow on the ribs again. He cannot control my arm to flip me there, so I have very good control. But this position here is more if you want to stand up to lift him and put the hooks, right? But usually when you turn to the guy, no, put the weight here to control. So that's, the, I believe, is the question. I'm controlling him, waiting opportunity to come to the clock two, whatever, right? So that's what it's gonna do. Oh no, no, this left hand hold my armpit. Yes, and this hand is gonna try to come right here on the defense. See? I like to defend with the far hand here, right? To block the guy. So take a look now. He's very well stabilized here, right? Have one knee on the ground, one leg straight. Very good here. But look what happened now. If I move my elbows forward, so I come one, two, you see? He don't have the same base anymore. See? If I'm here, I cannot flip him. If I stretch my leg back, keep the head on my back there. Yeah. See? I don't have the condition to do this. But as soon as I move my elbows forward, he becomes very light and now I can bring him and do the same thing on to the top. I control the wrist here, you have the arm lock right there. Or you just come to the top. Okay? One more time. Keep me here, defend my neck. Hold on, give Have a chance to control the wrist. Move my elbows forward. One, two, and just turn around. Right here, the arm lock's right there. Or if you don't have the arm lock, come to the side of the mouth. Good breath. Next one. Yeah, so I think you're flowing into this uh, next question uh, from Marcelo, a pack from Quattro Boys, uh, turtle position. Turtle position. Try it this way. Okay. So take a look here. When you the guy on the bottom, turtle, right? So they usually they close everything. The elbows come inside. I have no room to hold the collar, not here. So I have to be smart and create the space to dominate him and attack, right? So I'm gonna show some different options here. Number one, I'm gonna hold his arm pits right here. Right? And this hand I hold the collar. 
So now, take a look. I'm gonna lift him up. He's posing. I can slide through to get to the neck. Right? But sometimes that can happen. The guy holding the collar. When I lift him, he's holding the press, press the grip on the collar. He holding the collar right here. I have no condition, right? So from here now, I'm gonna make a fist, turn his face, and hold the shoulder. You see? So I control the shoulder right here. So and I'm putting pressure on the neck, even with the defense here, right? So now I wanna move him forward a little bit. One, sprawl, and put my forehead on the ground. When I walk around, the choke comes right away. It's a, just a variation of the clock choke. Because the real clock choke, you go to the collar, right? So, some people like to control the arm. You can keep both hands on the collar, too. I prefer myself to do like that, right? But it's not always you have it. the guy give you the freedom to go to his neck. They hold it, they hide it, you know, sh shrug here, hide everything, so it's not easy to get. So, that's the one I like to do. So again, control here, one, make a fist, turn his face, push, and now, see how I bring my fingers up? I hold right here on the shoulder, okay? So, another variation I can do, when I grab here, I'm gonna drop this knee to the ground, lift the other leg, and sit him on the ground, see? So again, he's in a bad situation. As soon as I move my body back here, he's going to attack. So it's another way to attack the guy in this position. Go back there. So this one is another option too, right? So this one here, I'm going to control his elbow. The previous one, I was holding the armpit, one. This one, I'm gonna hold his elbow and hold the collar. Four fingers inside the collar and the belt, right? So now I'm gonna pull. I'm very strong here because even if the guy is holding, I can put some pressure with my knuckles behind the neck to distract him, right? And I rip this one off. As soon as I rip this one off, I'm gonna step over and put my wrist against his wrist. Look, very interesting here. I don't like to hold the grip on the elbow because he, I don't like him to twist the arm to defend when I attack like that. Now I put my wrist against the wrist, put the pressure right here, see? The arm is ready to go. I don't even, see? I just move my hip forward and I create the pressure here. I don't need to stand up my other leg, fall back, nothing like that. So one more time. So he's block everything. I just go hold it beside the elbow. One, right here, very strong. This one, four fingers inside the collar. Doesn't matter how he defend, he can't avoid me. Put my hands right there. Now I put the pressure to my knuckles to push his neck to the ground. I distract him and I rip this one back. Step over the head. My wrist. Trap the wrist. Hold my collar. When I move my knee, make posture and move my knee forward, the lock comes right away. So this is another. Uh, situation you can attack, right? Uh, in case now, I did some from the side, but now let's go do something if he face me here. 
this another situation in having the fight. My first thing I'm gonna do, hold the belt, drag him to me, and post my elbow, put the pressure right here on his back, he don't run away. So I have the control here, the dog is on the leash, okay? So now I have to attack the neck, but look, he don't give me space. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna make my hand as a knife, straight, and gonna slide it through, touching his face, right? So it doesn't matter how much he close here, he cannot stop it to do that. So my hand come, and I slide it through, see? Hold his chin and lift it up. As you can see here, right? Soon as I lift here, now, that's the big mistake people do. They let go everything to try to hold the collar. So he stuck the chin down, I lost the space again. I can't do that. So I'm gonna put the weight, slide it through, hold the chin, lift it up. Now look, my thumb gonna slide on the throat. If you try to put the chin down, he can do it. Because I have the control here. See? And I'm gonna put my four fingers inside of the collar. Right here, and I have the grip. Okay? So now, when I get to this position here, we can do heavy main attacks, but those two I like the most, right? So when I did the control here, I'm gonna move my body forward to start the pressure on the neck and my hand on the belt. I go under his arm, hold the wrist. So now I'm gonna sprawl and when I scissor my legs here, is a reverse clock choke. Okay? Can I just get that on the other side? Or? Yeah, you go again. So, control the belt, put your elbow with the pressure here, your hand slide through like a knife, hold the chin, lift it up, four fingers inside the collar. Very important, keep your wrist on the throat. Your wrist have to be on the throat to be tight on the neck. Now look, I'm gonna move my body forward to adjust, and this hand here go on the head and hold the wrist. Now I sprawl, force my hip down, the pressure there already. If I go down here, you're gonna attack. Right? But the, the movement, when you sprawl here, oh, you're gonna so. let go to put oh, yeah. the pressure in the neck. You just scissor your legs like a clock choke. It's only 12 and it's a lot. You guys are not here to feel, but the guys are my students, they know what I'm talking about. So, and the second one, I control here again, same thing. Pressure into my elbow, go as a knife, lift the chin, four fingers inside the collar, keep my wrist right on the throat. But now, let's go suppose he hold my knee, with his right hand, right? Yeah, and push me. So I wanna come forward here, but start to move back, and it's blocking my leg here. My hands here are busy, I cannot fight over there with him, right? So if the guy don't let me go, look what I'm gonna do. My hand on the belt now, steady to go under the arm. I go to the other side and hold his pants. Right here, sit. My hand can lift your butt. They sit, the grip. Sit. I hold the far pants. <laughs> Sorry. Right here. Right. So now look what I'm gonna do. I just gonna press my knee, lay down, throw him over, and take a look the grip here. Now I just walk my legs close to him, and it chokes right away. Yeah. You'll have to do that again, more away from the wall. I did a horrible. So this one okay. is a very effective move, you know. It's 
passion against judo guys. They like to turtle like this and stay like a statue. And I to be like a statue and fight. I have to get out from the position. Control the belt, elbow press, hand goes a knife, lift the chin, wrist on the throat, four fingers inside the collar. Now he blocked me, he don't let me move forward here. Right? My hand here, go under his body, hold the far pants. Okay, now I just close my knee, throw him over, and touch my belly behind the head. See? When I walk my legs close to him, the joke immediately comes. So those are some of the attacks I like to do from when the guy go to the third position. Okay, Marcelo? I hope you enjoy. So, uh, just one thing here. Uh, some of the guys that are doing the questions are like my students, right? So, I believe sometimes they have the false impression when I show the technique, they can escape, they can do this, they can do that. My students know that they cannot do nothing. And even other students, when, when I travel to the seminar, they know that. So, go back there. Lay down. Oh. No, lay down. Lay down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going half guard. Somebody yesterday, uh, after I showed the technique, he said, uh, some guys here, when they do, they open the elbow here, they sit and underhook me here. Right? Said, so oh, and I showed the guillotine from this position. Oh, but the guy can go to your back. No, they can't go to my back. Right? They can go to somebody else's back, not to my back. So when they come here, I'm gonna hold him and control. Look at my elbow here. See the pressure. How if I move here to go to my back? His chance is zero. If he, he has the hand on the ground, if he tries to stand up, he can't because I'm sitting over his leg and forcing his body down. So that's what I'm saying, it's a false impression. Oh, I can do this, I can do that. No, you can't. Because the techniques that I show, I test many times before I give it to you guys, right? So now look, I'm gonna put my wrist beside the neck and stop. My arm don't go all the way through. Now I let go here and hold it fingers with fingers. See? As soon as I hold it here, I do the adjustment, boom. When I push him down, look, the choke comes right away. I just like to make my techniques clear. People have no doubts. But if you still have doubts, very welcome when the vibes go away. Make a visit here to feel by yourself. It's cool. <laughs> okay, you can go to the next one. Okay, I guess a couple of people want to say hi, not Pada. Hello, hello. And also from Instagram, um, Ariana says that she misses you guys, and misses Jiu Jitsu. Nice. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> and also, um, uh, Professor Marcio Dos Santos says spectacular Jiu Jitsu. Thank you very much. He's my brother, Max, from Brazil. So, uh, what's good with this interaction here we do? We have people from many places, right? Many people from BC, from Ontario, from Saskatoon, from Brazil, from Chile, Uruguay. I don't even know. My friend from Finland was there yesterday. So, a lot of people interact with us. And I, can, I have the possibility to share the Carson Grace style Jiu Jitsu to everybody. Okay, we have. Uh... Speaking of Uruguay, we have someone who's asking uh, about a strangled choke from the lapel, but there's another person who's also asking a strangled choke, uh, choke from the lapel from the guard, other than the basic cross collar. So what's another variation instead of the basic cross collar for a choke from well, the guard? My favorite is one from the back. 
Do this one here, right? I put someone in the garden, put some ado, control the sleep. So I think this one sleep you have to control because if you don't use it, the hands to open my legs and pass the guard, you're gonna have a hard time in here, right? And the other hand, I like to go to the collar. Why? Because I'm gonna try to break the force. I'm gonna try to pull him from me, and I force him to use both hands to push back, right? So I keep the guy busy, right? So I control, hold it, pull. You have to push me back. If you let go here, I go to the neck right away. And uh, how is it to say? Your grip in Jiu Jitsu is one of the most important things, right? So now, if I want to do the choke, I have to touch my wrist, right? This side of the thumb on the neck is way stronger than if I go the other way, right? So I'm right here, but if I try to go deep, he move away, right? So what I have to do? I'm gonna switch this grip here to the elbow. I'm still pulling the collar to force him to defend him, right? And now I go behind the elbow. When I hold it, I use my legs to bring him closer to me and slide my hand deep inside the collar and lock my elbow right away. What happened? Some people put the hand here, keep the arm straight. With his left hand free, he's gonna push my elbow. Look, I have no power here to do the choke because it's blocking my elbow here, right? So, when I go slide it through, make the grip, I lock my elbow right away. See, I bring my elbow to my hip. If you try to push down or make it faster, you can do it. See, I have the control. Now, my next step, I'm gonna open my legs, escape my hip to the same side I'm holding the collar. So I open, escape, and hug him. See? The hugs are very important. Now, my elbow, I'm gonna swing over. And I'm gonna push the head to my hip. Look, can you see I didn't do the grip yet? That's the, another big problem. The guys wanna do the grip right away and the ch chokes totally loose, right? So, when I push here the head all the way to my hip, now look, I'm gonna hold his back right here. When I move my hip back inside, the choke come right away. And he has no condition to defend here, right? So, some people think if I put my hand, this is a, one of the classic defenses for a choke. He, we call it talk on the phone, right? He think he can defend here, but in this situation he can't because it's a mix of choke with neck crank, right? So I go here. Step my hip, and I'm gonna push the head, see, and hold it back. I'm gonna get him, see. Even the, the defense, as soon as I move my hip inside, he's gonna tap. So this is a nice blood choke. It's a mix of choke with neck break. So impossible, this is my, one of my best strokes when I used to train in Brazil in the 70s, you know, even the guys complain to Carson Grace because I always get everybody and Carson said, oh, put your hand here, defend. I said, Carson, this is not a blood choke, it's a neck rank. And even with the defense, it's not possible to stop the, the movie. But this guy asked about another question. Yeah, about he, was, the, he was saying that that's the, you have the basic collar of cross choke and you want to see a variation. So I suppose the neck crank is a variation. Well, this is another choke. He's yeah. choke with neck crank. I'm going to hurt him and he's still going to fall asleep. Yeah. So the difference of the neck crank and choke, all the good chokes, the guy falls asleep. And the neck cranks sometimes hurts like the cervical choke, right? So we pull 
when you decide when the guy's got. Hurt your neck, but you don't fall asleep. So it's dangerous to against your spine and ribs, so especially for kids. So not everybody has a strong neck. Another one? Yeah, we have a question from Bert. He says some guys have really strong arms and keep adjusting every time you try to break the posture. How else can you break the posture from the guard? So, uh, that's what you call the stallers. They go to the fight, they don't want to fight. They don't want to do night and don't, let, don't want me to let me do night too, right? So I'm going to show here. So, I control this lead, control the collar, right? But if you're going to hold my belt, my, my collar here, whatever, right? So, and push me like this. And some guys are very strong, so it's not easy, right? To I'm just gonna show something for you. You see my hand is far away from the neck, right? And some people, especially people lift weights, they think they are invincible, they are super strong, they think, right? But in jiu-jitsu, against the leverage, they have no chance. So I'm just going to show you, grip is far away from the neck and I control this lead here. What I'm going to do here to destroy his grip, I'm going to move my hip out, right, put on the ground. Remember, always when I open, I hug him, see, I have a pressure on my legs. Escape my hip to the side and now I bring this leg over. So it doesn't matter how strong he is, when I pull the collar and arch back, look, he don't have any grip on my collar or my belt anymore, right? So, why? Because I'm using the strongest muscles of my body to destroy his little grip, so he has no chance. So control again, escape the hip, boom. Press over, arch back. Okay. Now I put my foot on the biceps. Look this position here. It's not great. Right? This one here. I can do the punch. See? What I did? My knuckles go inside his wrist and punch his arm. So he cannot defend here anymore. Now I climb this leg here to the shoulder, lock, bring the elbow to me, and I'm gonna do the kimura. Right? So it's an easy way to control the guy and attack the kimura. So, I hope you guys enjoy the techniques today. We're going to stop right here, and tomorrow we'll be back. Would you like to thank you, Zik? Thank you, Cal. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Tiago. I see you guys tomorrow. Thank you very much. <laughs>